Welcome to Cat Eye Studio, where photography meets inspiration and creativity. Today, founder Kat Slomer talks about one of the e-courses, Digital Photography Basics. What inspired you to be a photographer and can you remember taking your first picture? Actually, I can remember back to being, I think, eight or nine years old and uh, having a little 110 film camera and setting up my stuffed animals on my bed and uh, taking pictures of them in different compositions using that one roll of film. And it was just fun. I didn't stick with it. I was always into art, visual arts, painting, that sort of thing. But I loved how photography captured a moment. And over time, with just a little point-and-shoot camera growing up, 35 millimeter film camera, I got hooked on finding that perfect moment and getting that roll of film back from the developers and saying, ah, oh, there's this one great image. I didn't really pursue it, though, for a long time. I didn't realize I could get better at actually creating those images instead of them being serendipitous moments. How old was you when that first happened? Finding those great images probably started when I was a teenager. Did this take you into other forms of photography? Mostly probably of family and friends uh, growing up and then as I got a little bit older I started to scrapbook and so it was about things we did, places we went, people we knew, capturing those uh, fun moments interacting with people at that time. Who taught you the basics in photography or are you self-taught? So a little bit of both. I've had a couple of classes. I took an in-person class um, from the local community college a number of years ago, and that got me started in the basics. It was back when I was using a 35 millimeter film camera, and I didn't have the flexibility to just take pictures and pictures to learn. It wasn't until I got my digital camera and then took an online photography class that everything really clicked for me in terms of all of the different technical pieces and the ability to play around and practice with digital is so powerful. So from there, it's been books and reading and a lot of experimentation that's gotten me to where I am today with my photography. Do you think it's useful to experiment in your photography, do you think that's the way you find something new? I think it's essential to experiment in your photography. There's only so much, at least for me, there's only so much I can learn from a book or from reading. I have to take that knowledge and make it real to me. And the way I do that is by playing around with it. So if you're playing with say exposure, you have to try ranges of exposures in different situations and see what works, what doesn't. How does this come across in the final image? How can I edit it to make it look like I want it to look? And it's all about experimentation and play. And that's when that book or classroom knowledge clicks for me and becomes really useful knowledge that I can use over and over again. So do you think you have to be fearless to take photographs? You have to have a sense of fun, a sense of playfulness. That's where the good images really come from that a lightness and a connectedness with the moment. And if you're so worried about getting it perfect, you just stress yourself out. So for me, it's more around just seeing what happens, experimenting. Do you think that's where the magic lies in a good photo is actually being relaxed? with what you're doing and just letting go. Yeah, relaxed and then connected to the moment. When you let go of your anxieties and fears about creating something perfect, then you you find something more, you connect more with, with what you're doing. So do you think you can teach someone to be a good photographer or is it just a natural thing? I think it could be both, depending on the person. I think um, for some people, it's a very natural thing to do to compose an image and to get it to come out right. But you can learn uh, composition and you can learn the technical settings on the camera. It's not always intuitive how to take a picture and get it to look the way you want it to look when it comes to the technical details of how a camera works. And so you have to do both. For some people, it's natural and comes, but the more they learn, the more they can tap into that. And for others, if they have that desire, it's about practice and playfulness. So it's definitely a balance of both. So technical knowledge with also experimentation. It's those two things together. Absolutely. You can't have a great image 
that speaks to your heart without both the technical skill and the creative vision. Tell us about your e-course, Digital Photography Basics. So Digital Photography Basics is the course that takes you that first step for aspiring photographers who say, I want to get good images and I don't want to leave it to chance. So it gets you the technical skills to start explaining what's aperture, what's shutter speed, how do I edit photos to get them to come out to look the way I want them to. And who would you say this is aimed for? I'd say it's aimed for beginners, people who have a digital camera, they've been using it for a while and they want to take it that next step to understand how do I take it off of and all these automatic modes and get the image to look the way I want to take a little bit more creative control. It's not for photographers who have been photographing for a long time and want to move completely into manual mode. It's more for people that are ready to take that first step in creative control by understanding how their camera and the post-processing works. My niece who's 13, she just got a digital camera for Christmas. Would you say it's a perfect e-course for her to go on? I think it would be great for her to get started, to learn the basics of what, are, what do you have to think about when you're taking a photo? You need to think about light, exposure, and composition. And then how do I use my camera to achieve what I want to achieve in my images? What equipment do you need to start the course? So all you need to take this course is any kind of a digital camera and photo editing software. So um, a lot of people have... SLR cameras, which allow you a lot of creative control, and some people just have a point-and-shoot camera, which works fabulous. I use both. And while you don't have quite the range of control with a point-and-shoot camera, you can use it for this course. You can learn how it works. And then any photo editing software from a basic free online versions to more complicated Photoshop are, are possible to use in this class. What do you cover in the six weeks? So in the course of six weeks, we talk about capturing light, how your camera captures light and what to look for in light. We talk about exposure, how the elements of taking a photograph work together to expose uh, the final image. We get into composition and focus. It's really one of my favorite pieces of the class is talking about composition and a, it's very basic composition but it's what makes a good image and it's the first steps you need. We'll get into aperture and shutter speed which are some of the basic camera controls that most any camera has and then we talk a little bit about editing beyond the basics. As we go through the different technical steps we talk about how you use post-processing to support what you're doing with the camera and then also how do you then extend post-processing creatively and it's one of those things you can do with digital photography that wasn't as accessible for most people when we were talking about analog film photography. Okay so as well as technical tips do you provide creative techniques too? It's all completely integrated so we're talking about the technical skills but then I'm showing you how they're used creatively to get the images you want and I have a lot of examples that are included that help you understand how do you use exposure to set a mood and then how do you control your camera to get that mood. What level can I expect to be at the end of the course? So at the end of the course you would be able to use the creative modes on your camera. You would be able to independently set aperture and shutter speed and understand how that's affecting your images. You're going to have a good understanding of exposure and how to get the camera to get the exposure you want as well as adjusting it in post-processing. So basically at the end of the course you'll have that next step of knowledge to go out and practice and play and experiment and really figure out what is it I want to learn next? Where is it I want to go with my photographs? Is there a group forum? So it depends on which version of digital photography basics you take, whether or not there's a group forum. I have two different options. One is an on-demand option. You can take digital photography basics anytime. You just go to my website and sign up. In this option, you get the lessons, one per week, delivered via email, and I'm accessible for questions. You can email me anytime, and you get that information right when you need it. So if you have a new camera and you're you're raring to go, you want to learn right away, you can sign up for the on-demand course. The difference with the instructor-led course, which is offered once a year, is that there is a group forum. It'll be done in a group setting, and there will be a lot more interaction with me. So in terms of 
when you complete your exercises, you can share your photos, you get feedback from me, you can see the feedback for the other students in the class, and there's a discussion group. So it really depends on how you learn best. Do you learn well on your own and you want that information now? You can sign up for the on-demand course, and if you really thrive in an environment where there's a lot of interaction with other people, you can sign up for the instructor-led one when it comes available. Where can we find out more information on the Digital Photography Basics? You can visit my website, catistudio.com, and under online courses, you'll find a link to Digital Photography Basics, and all the information is there. Please go to the website to find out more about photographer Cat Sloma and for more information on the e-courses. Thank you for listening.